I want to briefly review the three equations we write when we do a precipitation reaction. The first one's called the molecular equation, and the molecular equation is the chemicals written as molecules. And that's a good time to balance. Then anything who is aqueous, we write them up as separate ions. Then we eliminate the ones called the spectator ions who are not doing anything, and we end up with our net ionic equation. Over here on the side, this is the uh, reaction that we did in class where we have um, silver nitrate solution here, and we mixed in some potassium chromate solution there, and then we got a red precipitate, and that is our silver chromate insoluble compound. Now, here's our silver nitrate. So silver nitrate, we could say that is made up of Ag plus ions and nitrate ions. And the potassium chromate was made up of K plus ions and chromate CrO4 2 minus ions. Now we were talking about when we have a solution, when we mix a solution like here, make a reaction, what happens is the po one positive ion goes with the other negative ion, and the same thing, this positive ion can go with this negative ion. So in solution, the different ions can bump into each other. Now if they do, they can make two new compounds, and the new compounds in this case would be KNO3, because K is 1 plus and NO3 is 1 minus, so a 1 to 1 compound. And we would also get silver chromate, but since silver is 1 plus and chromate is 2 minus, it'd be Ag2CrO4. So those would be our new compounds. So starting with our original compounds, potassium chromate, silver nitrate, we can end up with two new compounds, potassium nitrate and silver chromate, and at least one of those is in that solution as that red precipitate. Our first job then is to take those four compounds and rewrite them as a balanced equation. And we can see what happens is that we need to put in a 2 and a 2 to get these to balance. And then the very important part is to decide what are the phases in each of these cases. Now we know from our solubility rules that nitrate substances are always soluble, so that's going to be aqueous and this is going to be aqueous. And we also know that potassium compounds are always soluble, so that's going to be aqueous. And our last chemical here, the one that's going to be our precipitate, then we can say we know this is a precipitate in two ways. One is we know that there was a chemical reaction. We can see that. We know that there is a, a substance that does not dissolve in water, and it's not the KNO3. Or, by our solubility rules, we know that chromates are generally not very soluble unless you put them with the alkali metals or ammonium. So two different ways we know that that's our precipitate. This equation is called the molecular equation because we treat each of the compounds as molecules. This is the perfect time to balance and this is the perfect time to go through and decide uh, whether everybody is soluble or insoluble. Next thing we do is we can look at what we call the ionic equation. And for the ionic equation, any chemical that's aqueous is really dissolved in the solution. This means that in our solution, we had chemicals here, this is our potassium chromate, where the ions are just floating around by themselves, and in the solution here, we can see that maybe the silver nitrates, so those are floating around, but now that they've had a chance to get together, uh, some of them are going to stay together as a precipitate, and some of them are still going to remain in solution. So anybody who has aqueous means they're going to remain as ions, so what's that going to look like? is the silver nitrate will turn into silver ions and nitrate ions. The potassium chromate aqueous will turn into potassium ions and chromate ions. And we write it that way because that's what they're really doing. The silver chromate is not going to be written as separate ions because it's not that way. It's all in here as a precipitate. They're going to stick together and drop to the bottom of the uh, uh, container eventually. But here are potassium nitrate ions. Those are uh, as separate ions floating in the solution. So anybody who says aqueous, we split them up into their ions and be careful at this step because sometimes people say two silver nitrates, so they say two silvers and one nitrate. Remember the two applies to both. The next one is we can go through and look at these ions and say well this compound is formed 
from this ion and this ion. So these ions are actually doing something. They're the ones we care about. The other ions, the nitrates, are floating around before the reaction and after the reaction. The potassiums are floating around before the reaction and after the reaction. They are not actually doing any kind of a change, so we have names for those. We say that those are spectator ions. And our last step is to go through and get rid of those spectator ions. And we do that, then we have our net ionic equation, which is just showing the same equation we had before, eliminating the spectator ions. So what's really happening, silver ions are reacting with chromate ions and forming the reddish-brown precipitate silver chromate. Now if we want to see this again, kind of cleaned up, here are the three steps, the molecular equation, the ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. And that's all.